Shalom Israel, Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'm Elder Michael Johnson with the Lost Sheep of Israel. Today we're going to be going through a very interesting series today. And we're going to be dealing with Jew or Jewish, Israelite or Israeli. Who's who? According to scripture. This is something we need to find out because it's a lot of controversy going out there. It's a lot of controversy out there today as well as yesterday on who are the true children of the Most High. And we're going to go through today to make sure first we got to get the foundation. We want to understand exactly what's going on with this people. Once we get this foundation going on, then we're going to go into the second part. And the second part will be picked up on next week. And we're going to find out and pinpoint the people exactly, which we're going to be finding out a lot of about today and a lot of things that been taught throughout many different places that is not true. So we have a controversy that goes back and forth with the black sand. They are the true Jews of the scripture. And we also have the Jewish people, which ISH after Jew ish, ISH mean characteristic of something. So people saying that they are the true people of the scripture. Who's right? So again, we're going to present before you. <clears throat> and as I was presented this and, and we got to give an answer for this. So, we're going to look at the people that are in, in Jerusalem. Are they the true people of the Bible or are they imposters? We need to get this foundation for understanding. And we have a few areas that uh, we really need to understand that would assist us even later. So this is why we need to know who are the, 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 the true people of the Most High. Because one, we know they're going to be oppressed. They're going to be oppressed until the end of time. And it's only that the Most High can redeem us. Can't no man, and I'll make this clear, can't no man redeem you out of this. See, blacks are scattered throughout the world, the four corners of the earth, who were sold into slavery. Are they true Jews? or imposters. See our community, as we go through a lot of our uh, black communities, we have churches on every street corner. Is there a reason for this? Or who's who? So we gotta, we gotta precept this. We're gonna go through and we're gonna get an understanding and find out the truth because somebody's lying and somebody is being honest. Or both are. We're gonna find this out, and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna unpack this in precepts and understand exactly what the Bible is saying, because this is one of the biggest issues that most people really have, that who don't even know precept. What they want to do is go through outside books and resources and everything else, and then try to tell you what the Bible is saying or what it says based on somebody research outside the book and not using the book itself. This is one of the biggest problems we have. So we need to understand exactly what's going on. So we want to make sure that as we go through this scripture, we're going to do everything clear. And I want to make one thing real clear to where um, Brother Dudu told me to announce this as before I go through the scripture. Anybody that um, call himself want to help and pop up scripture and everything, he's going to remove you and you will not be warned from this point out. So if you want to pop scripture up there, that's up to you. But you will be removed from, from this teaching and probably from that point out. So I'm just that's just a fair warning because he asked me to do it, so I don't have a problem doing it. But what we're going to do, we're going to look at this based on precepts and we're going to start getting an understanding exactly what's everything that's going on 
and we're going to find out what is the truth. And we're going to see, so we're going to start here at Jeremiah 29 and 4. It says, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. See, this is the God of the people, the people called of the name Israel. See, and these was carried away captive. So we need to keep this in mind, captive. Keep this in mind, write it down. It's good to keep notes to where we won't get mixed up or have misunderstandings later. So we need to write this down, captive. See, but these was carried away from the land of Jerusalem unto Babylon. And the key here has four different elements. We have the Most High, we have captive, which they was carried away, captive, and away from Jerusalem into Babylon. So for us to start pinpointing the people, we need to first understand who, what, where, and why, how first we need to understand the definition of the word used in this passage, even captive. This is not a good meaning. See, these are people or a person who is often treated with great cruelty or indignity, meaning they were raped, they was beaten, they was killed, they was hung, they were sold as slaves, being not more than anything else than property. Even the children will be born in the same condition as the parents was placed. See, the children fall under the same treatment as the parents. These was carried away captive under the commandments of the Most High, the God of Israel. So all these people will be treated not as people or as humans. Keep that in mind what captive is. <clears throat> and this happened based on our sins. Isaiah 40, 47 and 3, it says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen, and I will, I will take vengeance, and I will meet thee as a man. So our sins will be uncovered, and our shame for the reason will be seen. Did you get that? See, our sin is going to be uncovered and our shame shall be seen. And for that reason, it's going to be seen. We're going to march through this. We're going to start getting a clear understanding on, on why it was seen. So it means to render a punishment above wrongdoings. These people will not be treated as mankind, meaning a man. For as for our Redeemer, as for our Redeemer, can no man get you out of this? Let's be clear here. See, just a side note, we have many people talking about they want reparations because another people, another nation put you in slavery. That's not true. This is the problem. The Most High making you clear, making it very clear. He put us in slavery. Now, he just told us what these people were like. He didn't tell them to do that, but he just told you the way that they live, their culture, this is what they're about. But when you start asking for reparations, then you need to go talk to the Most High because he's the one who put us here. This is one of the problems. But to go on more, as for our Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, his name, the Holy One of Israel. So he is the only one can redeem us out of it. Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. No man, as I said, can redeem us out of this captivity. So this is our first problem. So can a man, as we look at it, can he create a nation of people? Or use Genesis to create a nation within itself? Because a nation is not talking about land, talking about people. 
Can it? Can man create a nation within itself? It says, who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such a thing? Shall the earth be brought forth in one day? Isaiah 66, 8, 9. Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion trivial, she brought forth her children. Did you get it? Who heard such a thing of creating a name and changing the name of land and changing it around? See, this is craziness. Did the Most High create the earth in one day? No. So can someone create land of another part of her and call it theirs in one day? How can a nation of people be called a people in one day and change their names and declare another people? See, they went from calling themselves Jewish to Israelis. Israel is now called a country in the Middle East. This was done on May 14th, 1948, with the influx of the Holocaust, survivors of the Jewish people of the Arab and Muslim countries migrated from Jerusalem. They migrated to Jerusalem, now called Israel, during the first three years. See, this number increased in the Jewish people from 700,000 to 1.4 million by 1958. The population of Israel rose to about 2 million. Between 1948 and 1970, approximately 1.5 million Jewish refugees relocated to Jerusalem, now called Israel. Understand what's going on. Some new immigrants arrived as refugees and uh, with no possession and housed in temporary camps. Understand what I'm saying when I'm using these certain words. In temporary camps, by the year 1952, 200,000 people were living in these tent cities understand what they was living in tent cities same as Japheth 927 you go in Genesis 927 it says Yahweh shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servants more so the nation of Israel Zion was engaged in a captivity process trivial she brought forth her children. We'll find out who these children are also. See, this is what we need to make sure we unpack. Shall I bring to the birth and cause, and cause to bring forth? Say if Yahweh, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? Say if Yahweh. The Most High is saying, shall I bring forth another people and not Israel? Shall he choose another and shut up the womb once he was going to destroy Israel and start another from Moses? Who is still of the tribe of Israel, and we need to see, still need to understand what is going on. Exodus 34, 9, it says, And Yahweh uh, said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Why? He's tried put it on, just got tired of pulling up with their foolishness because they refuse to be yoked to anyone. They refuse to be yoked to him, meaning physically being yoked. So then guess what? There was yoked to slavery and symbols relating to, to burdens. Being yoked has a positive and a negative aspect, whereas the symbols were used in, in scripture. However, here being stiff necked was harsh comparison in refusing to be yoked yourself to the most high God himself. So just to be, uh, just refuse to do right. That was the main problem they was having. But we're going to get deep into this. We're going to start, now therefore, let me alone. See, this is the Most High speaking. Let me alone. Who? The Most High. Let me alone that my wrath may, wa may wax hot against them that I may consume them and I will make thee a great nation. He was going to consume us and make Moses a great nation and was going to start it all over again, basically what he was going to do. 
So he was going to use the seed of Moses to bring forth another people. But we're going to see a little bit what, what went on here. And Moses brought uh, <coughs> Yahweh, his God, and said, Lord, why do of wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power, with a mighty hand? See, Moses wanted to remind the Most High about the greatness he brought forth his people out of bondage. This is what Moses was doing. He wanted to make sure that the Most High had to remember what was going on. Let's drop down to Exodus 32 and 9. And it says, Wherefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in mountains and to consume them from the face of this earth, turn thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Now, again, this is one of the most confusing things when you especially dealing with Christians because they sitting there saying, and he repent. Or they say, well, no, he mean, he, it, it mean he, he just changed his mind, but he don't repent. Yeah, most I do repent because they don't know what repent mean. This is the problem. Moses was reminding the Most High that this people, and to remember that he did this. That's all he was saying. And remember of this evil against thy people. That's all he was talking about. And Moses wanted him to remember the Egyptians would speak mischief of the Most High God of Israel. That's that was it. He 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 need to remember the evil against the people and the forefathers. This is all Moses is talking about, but this is the problem most people have. Remember, Isaac, I mean Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Remember, thy servants to whom thou swear by thy own self and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. In all this land that I have spoken, I will give thee unto your seed in that and they shall inherit it forever. So Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, he swear by the word that he would multiply the seeds of the stars of heaven. So he can't kill them. Moses was just being a fringe. Why we need to have him. It was a fringe for the most high. He was just reminding him. He wanted the Most High to remember not to do this evil that, to destroy Israel. Why? Because he just wanted the Lord to remember what he promised them, a friend to them. Exodus 32, 9, 14, and it says, And Yahweh repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people, unto his people. See, so he remembered his promise of his forefather, and he did, and he did say to Abraham, this is all he did. We're going to look at that to understand what he did and what he told Abraham. We need to find out all this to go down through here and understand what is going on through here and get the complete understanding. Genesis twenty two sixteen 16, it says, And said, By myself I have sworn the Most High, saith Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing and not withheld thy son, thy only son. So Abraham didn't with, didn't withheld anything above the Most High, not even his own son. But one key thing is something to think about: what do son actually mean? It's something to think about. See, because it has a spiritual side to it, it has a celestial side to this. And even here, Abraham had two sons. He had Ishmael. Ishmael was already was removed out the land, but he had two sons. But the Most High said, and he was still living, Most High said, thy only son. So what do son really mean? See, we have a lot of people going to come in here, going to sit there saying they know what they're talking about, and they don't, because they can put this up. What do son actually mean? And we're going to leave that there, and we're going to see if somebody's going to answer that. And, I, and they need to answer it by precepts, not sitting there telling us something that they think. They need to put a precept in there to show exactly what son mean. 
and this is this is this is the problem. And and the same thing is people are gonna put up all kind of things is and son don't mean anything outside of what most people think. This is the problem. If you start putting up um such as um son mean um the child promises uh all this kind of stuff, then you need to sit and learn precepts and not sit there and think for yourself because that's not what that means. This is the problem. Because if you think that that's what it really means, then, then you have a problem with precepts. That's the key to knowing your Bible. But we need to understand and get, and get to understand. So what happened here and then that in that in in blessing I will bless thee and multiply multiply I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore in thy seed shall po shall possess the gate of his enemies so this is the promise he made to Abraham this is what he did this is what he was doing but it was a point to why he said, thy son. See, we're going to find out what that means in this, in part two. And we're going to find out that many people still need to go back and study their Bible. And in thy seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice making it perfectly clear because he did this in Abraham's seed, Isaac, meaning Jacob, the 12 tribes will be blessed. However, the promise the children were carried away captive because of what? Disobedience. As it says in Jeremiah, the most high people was carried away into confusion, which is Babylon from Jerusalem to Babylon, meaning nothing more than confusion. So they went from Jerusalem to confusion. This is all that happened. This is all he's saying. However, he said he would cause us to go into captivity, nothing more, nothing less. As it says, we need to look at this back to Jeremiah 20, 29 and 4. Thus says Yahweh Ho, God of Israel, unto unto all that are carried away captive, whom I, whom I, who, the most high, whom I caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to confusion. Are you following me? Cause it's going to start getting deep in a little while, but we need to understand some of this what's going on. So we need to look at this unto, unto just the land of, of peace to confusion whom he would cause to be carried away into confusion. However, he told us about to do something. Even when we there, even when we there, we still supposed to do something. Jeremiah 29, five, build ye houses and dwell in them, plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. So he told us to do something while we're there. Build houses is to learn more how to care for them as we are to care for his. So what he says, plant garden, eat the fruit of them, have children and teach them the commandments of the most high, have the fruit trees of the most high can harvest from. This is what he was saying. This is on the spiritual side. However, it's not shown in the proof that's need to be needed. Why? Because just in this one little verse, he's going to take two verses to explain it in our carnal side. Build ye houses. We are the temple of the Most High. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. Have children. And eat the fruit of them. And teach them the commandments. But watch how he breaks this down in regular, in regular terms. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there not and not diminish. So take wives amongst your children. See, here's your key that you, that you will not decrease in number. And he goes on more and seek peace in the number and peace, seek peace in the city whether I cause you to be carried away captive. See again, he's you seek peace where I cause you to be carried away captive. He's putting you in this. So I pray to the Lord. So and pray unto the Lord 
for it, for in peace, for in, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. <clears throat> so he making himself more clear, more and more all through here. But six and seven explains just that one verse five. So from one parable, look how much it took to explain one of with only 16 words. Because verse five only has 16 words. And he had to take two more verses to explain all that. So we need to seek peace. How? Keeping commandments of the Most High, the God of Israel. He explains this in verse 5, but this did not happen. Why? We continue to sin against the Most High. The Most High made, uh, the Most High enemies made league against his people to keep Israel in sin. Again, he, they have taken, these, his enemies have taken counsel and to go against the most highest people. How? Psalms 82, 83, 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and thy and they that hate thee had lifted up his head. So these enemies that made confusion, these hate the most high and came into a position to do harm to his treasure. But this is where a lot of people mess up, right here. Because we're going to get the truth here. We're going to get the truth today because we're going to run all precepts. So the Most High made a statement clear in Hosea 4 and 8, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take care of this. So we know that these hate him. They had lifted up their head. They had taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. See, these are the are the most high people. These nations consulted against the most high people, the hidden ones. See, the most high didn't hide them. They did. But they'll sit there and tell you the most high hid them. The most high didn't hide them. They did. <clears throat> the enemy says he is not the most high. So let's, let, let, let's get off this, this, this understanding because many people are going to sit there and say this is what the most high did. But this is what the enemies did. So let's make this perfectly clear in Hosea 4 and 6. It says, For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will reject thee, and shall be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of Yahweh, I will also forget thy children. Understand what's going on. This is why this is happening. See, we are destroyed for a reason. We are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because we seek and we refuse knowledge. We, we, we like to walk around as know-it-all, questioning the Creator. He inspired men, and then we had words to sit there and say, these ain't the, word of, the words of God. These are not being nothing more than, 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 than just ignorant men. These have gone their way of their own laws to seek, you know, to what suit, and they've forgotten the most high law. So he will forget our children. So we are cursed and be destroyed. This will be one of the signs upon the seed of Israel forever. This will be one of the signs upon the seeds of Israel forever. Deuteronomy 28.45 Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and ye shall pursue thee and overtake thee, Till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh thy God, to keep his commandments and his statute which he commanded thee. So, we refuse to do this. This is something we clearly refuse to do. And then the first thing we want to do is pass blame on somebody else. And what they did, he's telling you that he going to send all these curses upon us because we refuse to obey his voice. And then as soon as we refuse to obey his voice, the first thing we do is want to put it on somebody else. They the ones doing this. And all you have to do is listen and obey. The Most High said his word will not come back void. This commandment of his people is not keeping the commandments of the Most High. So these curses will pursue the people of Israel and overtake them until they be destroyed because they would not listen and obey 
the commandments of the Most High. This is the problem. This is, I'm talking, it's just so clear. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. What should be upon thee? These curses. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. What? Being destroyed. And they shall be upon a sign and for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. What? Those curses. You read down to Deuteronomy 30, 38. This is a problem. It's going to be a sign upon us. So let's see what, what, what happened openly. So the Most High made sure this happened openly. See, so we don't have no hidden ones because he did this openly. But we so stupid and won't seek knowledge, we don't even know who we are. You see how the switch goes in? See, people go read Psalms 83, which we're going to go back, and they say, oh, no, the Lord hid us from, 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 from everything. He didn't hide us. The enemies did. But he said, we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Why? Because it's our fault. We're so fast to pass blame on everybody else and not look at ourselves. We thought we fast to throw a rock at somebody else. And all we gotta do is look at the mirror and it's us. We wanna blame people in a heartbeat. This would be upon the sea forever. So they took counsel against his people, Israel. And these are the hidden ones. Who hid them? They did. Because they would not know who they are even today. Fulfilling scripture of today. This is why we're going straight through it. Isaiah uh, 1 and 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahweh has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. I have nourished and brought up children who the most high and they who Israel rebelled against me for Yahweh have spoken brought up children they rebelled against them I don't know I don't know I don't know how it's more clear than that these are the words that were spoken by, by his prophet Isaiah. And how it's spoken to all the children, they rebelled against him. We do this today against the Most High in so many forms of disobedience. We are disobedient in food, fornication, adultery against him and against our brothers. In churches under Gentiles, because that's one of the biggest problems. We like to sit under Gentiles because they, well, they, they speak more eloquently and, 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 and they so educated they they have doctorate degrees they have all these different type of degrees and 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 and, and, and they just the theology is just unreal they more they, they want to tell you what they ain't nothing for our scripture they ain't nothing more than dumb dogs that's it can't run one precept but you want to sit under because you think it's easier because their yoke is a lot lighter to carry the truth This is the problem. So you carry the way to their guys, teaching about another Christ, giving you false gospels to preach. See, and I'm going to come back to this. However, they consulted rightly and worked. And it worked. An ox know of his owner. An ox. Now he's comparing beasts to Israel. An ox know of his owner. So an ox know his owner in the ox. You can put an ox and put the owner of the ox and, the, and two other people if you want. And the ox going to go to the owner. Every time. You can put 10 men in front, but he, the ox going to go to the owner every time. I ask his master's crib. 
So you could take the same ass and take him five, six, seven miles away and have him doing something, but you let him go. When you get back home, he's right there selling you hello. He knows home. But Israel, but Israel, do not know. My people do not consider. We don't even know who we are. A chosen people and don't even consider, but we're destroyed by a confederacy. And so we don't consider of a chosen nation. So we are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. A sinful nation, a people laden with sin, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backwards. A sinful nation laden with sin. You name it, we do it. We're so sinful, we so corrupt our children before they're even born. We have forsaken the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, our, our God. We have forsaken Him. But then, soon as something goes on wrong, the first person we want to look to is Him. It's like a dog returning to his vomit. We do something because right now we're getting a characteristic of a people. And if you don't think we're not like what is being pointed out so far, then you in dreamland. See, we need to understand how we return back to vomit, thinking we will be slaves for life and then even in the next life because they told you this. They told you this. You were slaves here and now, and then they say even in the next life, you're going to be slaves again. This is what they say. So now you even have a question even that Jeremiah even asked for as for my people have committed two evils. Two. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Really, these are two things they have they have forsaken knowledge of him living water. And what else? And hewed them out uh, citterns, broken citterns, and they can't hold no water. You done put a hole at the bottom of your cup. And now you can't hold no knowledge. Your vessel can't hold not one drop of knowledge. Why? Because you're laden with sin. This is our problem. But we have people who want to go elsewhere to hear something soft and easy and not look at yourself. This is our problem. For my people that committed two evils, two. Forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Really? Because this is what they taught you. This is, this is conditioning and making you believe what you're not. Being told you're the children of Ham. You'll be a servant in this world, even a world to come. 
worshiping a white idol. They got white Jesus is everywhere. And many people going to keep them on their walls. And it's a lie. <clears throat> you, you've been a servant to them. So when you see this image of their God, you believe is your God. And you will bow down to it. And then you treat them differently because you think that's the God. You're a homeborn slave in your mind. And who feed you this? They give you false answers and we are in the position we're in today because we believe the lie. So they taking crafty counsel against his people and who are they? Who are they? <clears throat> the Tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hagarines, Psalms 83 and 3. But this again, where well, you missed it. Many people miss this. The Tabernacles of, Ist of, uh, of, of Edom. This is why you miss it. Take your time when we study. Because many confuses this. Many teaches this in all kinds of ways. Again, the tabernacles of Edom. This is just speaking of the area where the people will be temporary having habitation or a region of the tabernacles or tent have nothing more to do with anything else but even talking about a nation of people. These are the tents where they are, not the nations of them or these locations only. That's all it's talking about. The tabernacles, not the nations of Edom. The tabernacles, the tents. This is the problem. This is what we go through. <clears throat> this is why people get mixed up. Excuse me. The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, of Moab, and the Hangarines. So let's understand some of this. <clears throat> So let's understand this and let's break this down. Here's the areas, the tabernacles. See, the, this is the tents on where they are. Edom. This is the area of the most high enemies living. Edom, the people living in southern Sudan. Whoever these people are living in Atlanta at that time, these are the ones he's talking about right now. Two, the Ishmaelites. These are the people living in the tents of Saudi Arabia. Understand what I'm saying. Moab, the people living in the tents of Central Jordan. In the Hangarines, the people living in the tents of Egypt. This is where they're going to be. This is where they are. These are not nations. These are people who are living in those tents in those areas. Goes on more. Verse 7. Gabal. These are the people living in the tents of North Lebanon. These are the ones that are there. In Ammon. The people living in the tents of Northern Jordan. In Amalek, these are the people that are living in the tents of Sinai Peninsula. Sinai Peninsula. Ooh, that's a little tongue twister for me. With the inhabitants. Do you see that? With the inhabitants. With the inhabitants of Tyree. You don't see, they like, don't say nation. With the inhabitants, with the people in Tyree. The people living in southern Lebanon. Really? <clears throat> Excuse me. This is what this is saying. But it goes on more. Asher also is joined with them. Really? These are the people who are living in Syria, in Iraq. They're hoping 
the children of Lot. These are the people who are living in the tents or tabernacles of Lot that's down in Jordan. It's get clearer now and more clear. However, it get deeper as we find out why they must and wanted to stop. However, we need to look a little bit deeper and understand what was happening and going on. Psalms 83, nine, do unto them as unto the Midianites, as Caesarea and Jaban at the brook of Kason. See, this is, they normally stop when they do those names. They say these, those are the people, and it's not. Those are the tabernacles. But we can already find out some stuff. See, now we're going to start digging in and start understanding exactly what was going on and why they said what they said back in Psalms 83. We still, we still in Psalms 83. We're going to find out why they're saying this. So we need to find out they, what they said and what they want to do because they want to do to Israel the same way Israel did to the Mennonites, Syria, Jaban, and the Brooks of Kesan. So what did we do that was so bad? Because they saying they want to do something to, to, to Israel. So we need to look at this, what they're planning to do to us and what they were doing to us as they continue. So we need the precepts to find out why. And as I said, we're going to get into this and really start getting all the understanding all together because now we're going to start finding out see it says which perished at Endor they became as dung of the earth see because they perished in Endor and became as body waste so what happened this is where we get nosy we want to find out what's going on all together we want to know what's happening but we're going to see what went on and get all this clear in precepts. See, we don't need to find out what somebody think, what somebody want to do. We need to find out what is happening. So because they perished at Endor, because they compared their body weight, it happened in Israel, and it was a war against the Mennonites by the commandments of the Most High to Moses. And here it is. We're going to look at this. Numbers 31.6, and it says, And Moses sent them out to war, a thousand of every tribe, them to Epiphanes, the son of El uh, Eleazar, the priest, to war with the holy instruments, the trumpet to blow at his hand. So Moses sent out 1,000 men from each tribe. So 12,000 men went out to put in some work, technically what was going on. And this is what we need to find out. However, Moses ordered this. And it was ordered by the Most High. So, and they warred against the Midianites as Yahweh commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. Really? Didn't we just see this up in Psalms? But watch what's going to happen. We're going to see this. It's it, it going to get really good. So you sit back, get you some popcorn, because we're getting ready to find out what happened. So he ordered this war to him, and they killed all the males. If you do the study, if you continue to go down, we're not going to go all the way down through this study, but if you go down through that study, you'll see what they did, what they did, and what happened. I'm just going to give you an overview on what happened here, but you can read down through, through numbers and see what happened. And they killed all the males down in the study that you see, and they took captive all the women and the little ones and the spoils, meaning the cattle, the flocks, you know, and all the, and all the other goods is what they did. However, when they returned to Moses, and he seen that they kept all the women and the little ones alive, people who caused Israel to sin against the Most High, Moses ordered them to kill all the little ones that are male. If you read that down, you'll see what's going on. Just, 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 just put a marker there and just come back and just read it because it's really interesting on what happened. And then every woman that has sexual relations with men to kill them too. However, but every woman have not known a man by sexual relations, they can keep for themselves. They must be virgin according to the laws of the Most High. Again, people think that he made, same as he made um, Hosea marry a harlot, was of the flesh. That's the same as it goes on again, complete foolishness. However, this was done to the Midianites by the hands of Moses of the order of the Most High because they caused Israel to sin 
with an idol, Balaam. So if you continue down and read it, you'll see it there. Let's go back to let's go back to Psalms and finish this out. So he said, do unto them as compared as unto the Midianites. So that's all he's saying. So do unto them compared as what we did to the Midianites. Compared as to Syria and Jaban at the brook of Kizan. So now we got two more that's in here where something went down. So we need to see what he done there. Because however, we've seen what he did to Midianites, but we need to see what he did to uh, uh, Syria and and that because uh what he mainly was doing his heart was hardened against israel and that way we'll see what was going on but the same king that was in egypt his heart was hardened against moses at the time also so we need to understand what was going on in all these locations as we was traveling through let's start getting some understanding in one second so which paris had endured they became as dung of the earth you see that so they became dung of the earth but we need to find out why here we go. Let's go to Judges 4 and 10. It says, In Barak called Zublin in the folly at Kadesh and went up 10,000 men at the feet and Deborah went up with him. So, Barak called his brothers, called on his brothers, so Zublin and the folly to come to Kadesh. They came 10,000 deep and Deborah the prophetess with him. See this, see, 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 this getting ready to go down. <clears throat> and in Heber, the, Ken, the, the Kenite, which was the children of Hobab and the father-in-law of Moses, had served himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent in the plain of Zebanon. So we so so we know right here which is by Kadesh. So we know it was going here. So the children of of um Hobab, the father of Moses, served served from the the the, the Kenites. He put up a tabernacle in the plains of Zenanim, which was next to Kadesh. But watch what's gonna go start going on. And they showed Syria and Barak, the son of Abanan was gone up to Mount Tabor. But watch what goes on. So once they went up there, we're gonna start seeing what some things that started happening. And so we gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him in in uh Herosheth, in Heroseth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kashan. So this is what's going on. We need to understand exactly what is happening here and get the clear understanding on what's happening. So once Caesarea gathered all his chariots, 900 chariots of Caesarea, they went down to the river of Kishon. Here, they, they was going together and here's where the problem is. So we need to understand exactly what goes on to them? Because we got to see exactly what happened here. And uh, once we start understanding this, we start getting a better understanding exactly what was going on through all this here. So we're going to drop down. Let's go down to verse 14. And Deborah said to, to Barak, Up for this day in which the Lord have delivered delivered Syria in thy hand is not the Lord going up before thee and Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him so we understand right here now Deborah says she delivered meaning what that he was going to win this battle <clears throat> and Barak went down to Mount Tabor with the 10,000 men directly to Caesarea because now he was more confident this was the problem. So once we see that this was going on, now we need to understand in verse 15, and the Lord discomforted Caesarea and all his chariots and all the hosts with the edge of the sword for Barak so that Caesarea 
lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. So evidently he thought he can get away and, and get away on feet and not even on his chariot. So that's what he did. He got off his chariot and guess what? He started running, he ran away, he fled away on foot. But watch what's going on. Verse 16, and Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host and uh, Herod says, the Gentiles of the, of, of the Gentiles and all the hosts of Caesarea fell to the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. So everyone actually got killed in this in this incident. So Barak pursued after the chariot, but this is what was going on in Caesarea after the death of the man Caesarea. However, when you go to Howbeit and Caesarea fled away on feet in a tent to, to, to Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jaban and the king of uh, uh, Hazor in the house of Heber the Kenite. Now watch what happened because Caesarea actually thought he got away. This is what was going on because he thought he got away on foot and he went into the tent of um, uh, Jael, the wife of uh, Heber the Kenite. And he stayed between, he stayed between Jaban the king and Hazor the house and, um, and uh, Heber the Kenite. So this is what he thought he got away from. This is what he thought he was doing. But watch what goes on. And then, oh, one second, I just went a little bit too far. In, yeah. And he said, so back in Psalms 83 9, now we want to make sure we're clear. He said, Do unto them as a minute I asked the Caesarea and Jaban at the Brooks of Kisan. So now we need to see what we see what happened there. But now we're going to get the full picture of using them as an example, doing to them as they did unto us. As he said, which Paris is indoor and they became as dung of the earth. Now we can see why. And he said, and Yahweh subdued on that day, Jaban, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. So on that day, they got served on that day. And then Jaban was next up for order. This was the problem. And at the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jaban, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jaban, the king of Canaan. So we know that Jaban was destroyed. And this was the problem that was in Psalms and used as an example to make us as Israel. However, they wanted us to perish. So you see how, how they're going, because this is why they wanted to do this. And they want they want to make that comparison as we go go back and it says do unto the Midianites same thing as Caesarea and the Jaban at the brook of Kazan. This is what he's talking about. This is what they're talking about in Psalm. They wanted to make us to be an example like we did them. This is all they're saying. They wanted to make sure we understood this. So let's see the comparison they speak of. Let's go over here. And we're going to look in uh, one second, and it says the same thing, came back into the pair. But we need to understand in Joshua, it says, And Manasseh had the land of Tippanu, but Tippanu on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. So we know that uh, Ephraim and Manasseh was brothers. So these are the children of Joseph. But now we're going to see Manasseh belonged to the children of, of Ephraim and had... Um, Tippana, the children of Israel, and this is going to, we're going to see in one minute showing the division of this and the coast descended into the river of, uh, of uh, Cana, southward of the river of the city of Ephraim or among the cities of Manasseh. The coast of Manasseh was also was the north side of the river and the outgoings of it were at the sea. What is this happening? This is just showing a division. But watch how we're going to see what's going to go on. Because all this is going to come together and they're going to click all into one. And then it says southward, it was Ephraim. And northward was Manasseh. And the sea, and, and the sea is his borders. And they met together in Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. You see this is talking about nothing but Israelites around there. But we know Manasseh and Ephraim is the sons of Joseph who came through and was also the son of Rachel. Verse 11. And Manasseh 
in, in Issachar, in Asher, Beth Shine, and her towns in, in Elbling of her towns in the inhabitants of Dor in her towns in the inhabitants of Endor in her towns in the inhabitants of Takanak in her towns in the inhabitants of Magdito in her towns even three countries. You see all this what they have. However, they were still unable to get rid of the Canaanites. This is why I say this is get confused, but all this going to pull all in. In one second, we're going to see how the, all this going to come together. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. So this was the main problem. They couldn't dwell in that land, but then this is where the problem going to start coming. And then they know that they are said, which are perished indoor because of Israel and only later to become strong and put the Canaanites to, to tribute is what happened. So let's go back and still get the clear understanding exactly what's going on here. As he said, do unto them as the Midianites, Caesarea, as Jaban, and the Brooks of Kazan. So we see the example going against us under the orders of the Most High, which showing much more that they hate him and why they hated him and hated us without the cause. But they wanted to do the same thing to us on what we did to them based under the orders of the Most High. This is what was going on, and which Paris had endured, and they became as dung of the earth. This is why it says that. Verse 11, make their nobles like Urb and Zib, yea, all their princes in Zeba and Zumalan. So this is what they want to do. So they want to make all our official administrators and, le and leaders of Israel like, like we did theirs. This is what they want to do. And they wanted to do whatever we needed to do to these, they want to do to us. That's what, what they were saying. This is why you see in Psalms what they were saying up at the top, what they were saying, that, what they wanted to do to us. This is why that went on. Go back to Judges 7.25. And it says, And they took two princes of the Midianites and Herb and Zib and slew Herb upon the rock and Herb. See, so this would happen there. This is why you see that over in Psalms. Because this is what we did. And then it says in, in, in Zeb, they slew at the wine press of Zeb and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Orb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. This is what we did under the orders of the Most High. See, remember, Israel killed them. See, and they didn't forget this. And this is what they wanted to do to us. This is why when we go back to Psalms, that's what Psalms is talking about. And the Most High was aroused and, and his anger would cease to be come and it would come to the forefront. And this is why we was having this problem and when Isaiah was spoken, because Isaiah also spoke of this event. We got to remember, you know, all the ones who spoken about this, but the Most High arousal will cease to anger, will come to the forefront of what was happening. Isaiah 10, 24 Thus said the Lord of hosts, O my people that dwelleth in Zion, be not afraid of their sarans, he shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the matter of Egypt. Why? Because he is telling Israel, don't be afraid of them. He will smite them after the manner of Egypt. Don't even worry about it. Why? Because in yet very little while my indignation shall cease in my anger in their destruction so he's going to be aroused in his anger and he's going to become their destruction because this is what he's, he's he's only going to put up with them for a little while to where he can get them to a point to where he can destroy them why and the lord of hosts shall stir up the scourge for him according to the slaughter of midian at the rock of herb and as the rod upon the sea so shall he lift lifted up after the manner of Egypt. Why? The Most High will start a criminal law process of punishment according to the way it happened in Midian at the Rock of Herb after the manner of Egypt. So they came up to the they, so they came up with this plan. Plan one, to keep us in sin. This is what all this was the whole plan. This is what Psalms is talking about. To keep us in sin, that's like kryptonite to us. Because it keeps us separated 
and keeps us weak and separated from the Most High Yahweh. That's plan one. Two, to make it impossible for us to win. And if how, how it makes it impossible? For our, our God will not fight for us because he gave us strength to do the same thing. And the same thing as he gave Samson strength in with very few. As Gideon took the same few to show his power, even with 300. Samson destroyed a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. But you got to remember, when you sit there and you stay in laden with sin, when you're laden with sin, he cannot fight for you because he hates sin. They knew this. They know this. So they know all they have to do is just keep us in sin and they to keep us separated from the God of Israel. So don't think they don't have your number because they have it. Because they do. This is what they do. Their game is to keep possession of the Ark of the Covenant. What is the possession of the Ark of the Covenant? To keep you in sin and breaking the laws that is written on you. That's all they're doing. So if they can keep you tied up in this, this will keep you always in confusion and we will never be able to get out of anything. So we will, they will continue to control everything as long as we continue to see ourselves as Gentiles and act like Gentiles or strangers. We can never remove the treasure. Next time you see some of these movies, even about the pirates, remember what they do and what they look like and what they do it for. They steal treasure and they bury it. Same as the Most High said, that if he have a treasure, he bury it, but he return to get it. Same thing with a pirate. The pirates have taken and doing the same thing. So if they can take it and they can keep us laden with sin, they can keep the ark. They keep the ark and just keep the ark in sin. And you can't get it back. Because we truly believe we can do whatever we want and just keep asking for forgiveness and he's going to continue. So we'll continue in bondage to this day if we, if, if, if we don't change. So this is why they made a confederate with many nations. So we are the fools have fallen for it and we cannot see anything. So we're just blind. So we really don't know what's going on because we look at something that we know about our God Yahweh, but our ears understand the words that are being said and we don't listen. This is this is this is our problem. So many think that we they don't know, but they know. They know keep us laden in sin. Just keep us laden in sin, and we will continue to go off on this tangent on somewhere else and not knowing what the most high requires of us. This is our problem. And we're going to look at something. We're going to go to Judith. Let's go to Judith 5 and pick it up at 1. Now, this is letting you know they know. Don't think they don't know. They know. It says, then it was declared to Euphrates, the chief captain of the army of Asher, that the children of Israel have prepared for war. The children of Israel have prepared for war and to shut up the passages of the hill country and have forfeited at all the tops of the hill and had laid impediments in the champion countries. What is he saying? They're, okay, now we had a captain named Ephraim, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the army of Asher, told, they were told him that Israel had prepared for war and closed off all the passages of the hill country. So they forfeited, including meaning they strengthened up the tops of the hill, including the impediment, which... Which, which which also hinders the progress or 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 for people in chariots that that might be in motion that's trying to go, go through there. This is what this is what Israel already had did ahead of time. These hindrances are serious obstructions or obstacles that will cause them to turn back and go another way because the physical conditions was unable to succeed by the champion country. Meaning that's what's the open parts. Those this is like open land. That's all they're saying. So when they're saying in the in the in the champion country. See, that's what, that's what they were doing. This is the open parts of it. What went on? Verse 2. And it says, whereas 
he was very angry and called all the princes of Moab and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the seacoast. So Ophrates was, was, was he, he was upset. So Ephraim, he as he was upset, he killed all the captains and all the governors together, and that uh, Israel had already jumped on them. And what and what he's saying is because he because he because that Israel was you know it was way ahead of him. But watch what happens. And he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is that dwell in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhibit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is the power and strength, and what king is set over them or captain of their armies. You see all these questions that he 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 want to understand this. So these African sons, the sons, the sons of Canaan, he wanted to know these people, and dwelling in the hill country and all these all the inhabitants, and he wanted to know who these people were and where they come from and who is their captain. This is what they want to know, but watch what happens. And why have they determined not to come to meet me? more than all the inhabitants of the West. This is the crazy part. Now these Israelites, see they chose not to even meet with them on this matter. They just set up and they got prepared for war. Not even, they didn't even meet with them. However, his questions asked, he would not like to answer either. Because he asked him a question, he wanted to know who are they, where they come from, who are they king, or who are they captain? But one of the problem is, one of them knew, and he gonna he gonna he gonna he gonna drop some serious knowledge on him, and let him know. And the son of Abner is gonna break this down completely for him. Watch how this goes, and and they, and they gonna we gonna show you how much they know what they know. Then said Ankar, the captain of the sons of Ammon, let my lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant. So he's letting him know. Let me speak, and I would declare unto thee the truth concerning this people. These people that, that, that you're getting ready to go to war with, let me tell you something what's getting ready to go on with them. Let me tell you about these people. I'm going to tell you the truth concerning these people, which dwell near thee in the inhabitants of the hill country, and there shall no lie come out of my mouth, out of, out of, out of the mouth of thy servant. So he said, let me tell you what's going on here. And I'm not going to lie to you about nothing, but you need to know about these people. And you need to know something concerning those people that, that, that you're talking about going to war with. So I need this permission to break this down to you for everyone to understand this. Clearly knowing if he lied, he would have been killed for so speaking lies to, to him. But watch how he knows us and our God. And we don't know ourselves. And he goes, this people are descendants of the Chaldeans. So these people are descendants for the Chaldeans. He's going all the way back to Abraham's daddy, getting ready to cut out. The people dwell the descendants of the Chaldeans went all the way back. To, I'm talking about he going all the way back. And they sojourned henceforth in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers which were in the land of Chaldea. So they lived in Mesopotamia because they wouldn't follow what Abraham's grandfather was following. They, they refused to follow so they left. And it goes on more. And they left the ways of their ancestors and worshiped the God of heaven. So they worshiped Yahweh of heaven the God whom they knew, so they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they and they fled until Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. This is what this is what we clearly know. So they left the ways of the ancestors and went back to the ways of Noah, following the God of heaven. This is what happened. So they was cast out from the face of those false gods in Mesopotamia and fled and fled. I mean, fled, uh, left the uh, Chaldea. And fled to Mesopotamia. And that's where they stayed. 
let's go down to verse 9. Then Yahweh commanded them to depart from this place where they saw a journey and went up into the land of Canaan where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and very much cattle. So we know here that, they, that, that he commanded them to leave and to go into Canaan, but, they, yeah, but as they just start building up well, they was gaining much gold, much silver, much cattle, and they be start becoming a very rich nation is what was going on. And as it continued, but when the famine covered the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. And while they were nourished, they became their great multitude so that one could not number their nation. Exactly what they're trying to do today. But however, the family went out through Canaan. But we have to remember, you see right here, it's not speaking of Joseph because, you know, Joseph went ahead. He was ahead of them because they sold him into slavery. And then he went into Egypt and he was the one that actually kept Egypt, but he ended up saving all Israel. This is technically what was happening here, but he don't mention that part in here. But he was doing that to where he just giving you an overview over everything that happened. And the numbers grew. And it says, therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt suitably with them and brought them low with labor and brick and made them slaves. So now we know the king of Egypt at that time, this one didn't know Joseph, and he made Israel slaves to the Egyptians, and Israel served Egypt to hard labor. This is all he's saying. He's giving you a complete overview on what was going on as he's telling, as he's telling this, 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 uh, this king. Then it says, then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. So however, their God heard the cry of Israel, and this was a, this is talking about the one of Moses. And then later they was they, they came out and put all and he put all these incurable uh, diseases and plagues on on the Egyptians. This was at the hands of Moses when Moses was doing this. Then the king of Egypt cast them out of their sight. This is all he's saying. This is your general understanding on what went on. Let's go down and. Yahweh dried up the Red Sea before them. So then the Most High also parted the Red Sea so they can cross so they can go across. This is what this is showing you how he's pinpointing everything that went on, giving you a general overview so we'll understand it. Now watch what goes on. And it says, and brought them, brought them to Mount Sinai and Caves Berni and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So God of Israel also in the mountain of sin, which that's what it is, is the mountain of sin is Mount Sinai and Cain Bernese meaning separateness. So Mount Sinai is the mountain of sin. Cain Bernese is meaning separateness. That's all that means. And then they put forth all Israel in the, in the wilderness in place where of the lost. So the wilderness meaning the place of the lost. That's all it is. You're in the wilderness. And there we have to learn. That's where we are currently today. Verse 15. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites and they destroyed by their strength all them of Asbon and passing over Jordan they possessed all the hill country. So Israel took all the city of Asbon, the Amorites and all the cities within it. So they just took part, they just took, uh, looked at one part. However, there was another part passing over Jordan, but let's see what happened right there. So we're going to pause here for a second and we're going to see what happened here because when we went into Esbon, something happened in this way saying. So we just want to check this out and we're going to come back here. But let's go to Numbers 21 and 21. It says, And Israel sent messengers to Zion, king of the Amorites, saying, so he, so as we were getting ready to go through, he, they, they sent some messengers to this king because they wanted to pass through. And it says, let, let me pass through thy land. I will not turn unto the field, into your vineyards. I will not drink of thy waters of the well, but we will go along the king's highway until we pass thy borders. This is what they wanted to clearly do. Not do nothing more and just go through. But the messengers told the king this and 
they weren't going to touch the fields, hungry or not, they weren't going to do anything, and they weren't going to ask for water, nothing. They just wanted to pass through the land and just get to the other side of the border. That was it. That was all they wanted to do. Let's see what went on there. And it says, And Zion would not suffer Israel to pass through his border, but gathered all his people together and went out against Israel until the wilderness and came to uh, Jahaz and fought against Israel. Now, we just wanted to pass through the land. We weren't trying to look for a fight. We just wanted to pass through to get to the other side. But they decided they're going to fight. So the king of the Amorites refused Israel to pass through the borders. Even more so, he gathered all his people and went out against Israel and fought, fought us for no reason in the wilderness. And when they arrived, Jahaz fought against us and king Zion, why? Because he didn't trust us. Let's see that. Let's go that. It says in Judges 11.20, it says, But Zion trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Zion gathered all his people together and pitched, and, and pitched in, in Jahaz and fought against Israel. This is what they did. This is why this happened. But let's get, let's, let's get a little bit more information. Back to 21.24. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed the land from Amaron and Jabuk and even all the children of Ammon for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. Even though they were strong, they got, they got served. This is what happened. All because of what? They already got killed by the edge of the sword because they didn't trust us and all we wanted to do was pass through the borders. But it goes on more. And it says, And Israel took these cities of Israel, dealt in all the cities of the Amorites and Hezbon and all the villages thereof. So after we dealt, dwelt in all these cities, Israel took all the cities of the Amorite and resided in Hasbon and the village and all the villages included. So which the king had taken from from, from Ar, the king of uh, Moab, now we happen to, to be in Hasbon and sign the king of the, Amor of, uh, of the Amorites. So we end up doing the same thing to them and we just want to pass through. Nothing more. Let's go back to let's go back to Judith and finish this up. So that's why that's why this happened. So this is why it says, and they were destroyed by their strength. All them in of Aspen passing over Jordan and possessed all the hill country. So that's what this is actually talking about. This is that event. This is why we just want to see, get a, get a picture and full understanding of what, what went on when they so dwelt in the land of the Amorites. Because when we were going through the land of the Amorites, we just wanted to pass through. He told us no. And as he told us no, he decided to also go to war with us. And went to war, even though they was very strong, they still lost. Why? Because we had the God of Israel who was with us. This is what happened. So let's keep moving down. And it says, and cast forth them in Canaanite, and the, and the Parasites, and the Jebusites, and the, and, the, and the Semites, and all the Jebusites, and dwelt in the country for many days. So Israel threw out all these countries, all these nations, out of the land. So it said, and they cast forth before them. So all these people got tossed out. Everybody get every people getting getting every now everybody getting tossed out their land. So we couldn't pass through. Y'all make war with us. We cast all you guys out. Pretty much what happened. Verse seventeen, and it says, and with they sinned not before their God, they prospered because the God that hate iniquity was with them. You see this? Because he was with them. This is the key. Israel do great under rules of the Most High because the Most High hates sin. Even as a man tells this to them, they know. However, as long as we continue to do this, we will continue to to prosper. This is what will happen. But when they departed from which the way he have appointed them, what? Keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of him, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captive unto the lands where was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by, by the enemies. Why? Because they departed from the laws of the Most High. They departed from His laws, and then anytime we encountered a battle, we were going to captivity. 
Why? Because we left the laws of the Most High. Our temples and everything was destroyed and was taken by force. And it goes on more. But when they return to their God, I mean, when we return back to the laws and we come up from the form of our places where we were scattered, where they were scattered, we have possessed, we have, um, possessed, uh, possessed Jerusalem and their sanctuaries is and are seated in the hill countries for it was desolate. So I had, however, last anchor, the captain can't remember they have returned. See, this is, this is all they know. Last he remember, they returned to the laws of their God and they possessed Jerusalem and it was wasted. But now it's not. It's beautiful there. Now we have to understand. See, it was desolate. But we know, we know that as far as what he know, they didn't return. He said, now, therefore, Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, in that sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. So he's telling them, let's go down there. Yeah, I'm with you. We're good. We'll send a few people down there. We're going to check it out. And if they got sin, let, 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 let us go put it in some work because we will win. And because these people, if they got to send in there, no way, because they, they got going to depart from them. Because he will not fight for them. Why? Because he hates sin. He will not fight for anyone who lives in sin. Period. He goes on more. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them, and we become reapproached before all the world. He's making it plain and clear. So if we go down and they're following, and, and, and they see that we're following those laws, we need to just pass them by. Because this would be a waste. So this was the issue that we were talking about, why he wanted to make an example, as we see in Psalms 83 and 11. And like their nobles, Herb and Zib, yea, and all their princes in Zib as Zumalan. So this is why they wanted to do it. Here's what they wanted to do to us, making examples of us. Not only that they make an example of us, they make all Israel even no more in remembrance, period. This is what they wanted to do, completely knock us off. We, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Why? Because they made a confederate against the chosen people of God of Israel and was willing to lie, deceive, change laws, discriminate, bias decision, jail, destroy our children, even before they are born, poison, hang, rape, you name it, they do it. They are not here to play games. And to do what? Make sure. For they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. They want to completely destroy you from this world, period. That the name Israel be no more in remembrance. They don't even, when they say no more Israel, not just calling you that, they don't want you here. If they can destroy all Israel, this world cannot come to an end because he cannot break his own laws. This is why it's happening this way. The kings of this world and Israel is, is, is they want to make just Israel a figmentation of remembrance. This will be carried out by all means necessary. Now, this is the foundation and we can all now go through this because we understand why they want to be no more in remembrance of us. This is what the problem is. This is what we're making sure it is clear now. Let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us destroy the entire nation. That the name Israel be no more remembered. They don't even want you here. 
So this is the so this is the, the the foundation and the characteristic, including the sign that will be upon the chosen people of Israel. So you need to understand the complete picture of the hatred. They even want to make examples of us. They do examples of us all the time. This is why you need to clearly understand, pinpoint, understand why Israel to be in sin because the Most High will do for us if we're not sinning. Separate and destroy, poison and destroy. Use anything, even, even their own, to destroy us. Remember what Samson did. They let him go into their own daughters to what? To get us to sin, to be destroyed in lust of the flesh. This is what they, this, they, they, they key in on this. Look at our basketball players, our football players, our baseball players. You name any famous person and you have many of them relating themselves with sin because if you marry an outside your nation, you're sinning. Because they can destroy at any time. So remember the strength of Samson. He killed a lion with his hand. Killed 1,000 men with the jawbone of an ass. And was destroyed by the lust of one woman. So we need precepts for the main, for the main part of this. Because we have the, the logistics. We have the, the foundation on what we need to understand exactly how we was laden with sin and what they want to do to us. Many people are going to have to probably go back and look at this because I know a lot of this probably didn't make too much sense. Because the second part is where you're going to get a whole lot of meat. So we need precepts for that. But my main thing is this. Can you handle the truth? Because we're going to find out. See, the precepts of Deuteronomy is what we're going to come up with next. Can you really handle the truth? See, we need to get to understand that the chosen people in the image and to clearly find them out. This Bible is speaking of one people and one people only. It is speaking that these people or black. They have been spread through the four corners of this earth. He sent us into captivity. He is the one that, that's going to redeem us, not no man. So we're going to go through the second part of this on next week, but I want you to remember something. Sons of Solomon 1.5, it says, I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So the precepts of this verse, you'll see by one reason, many people think in this Bible is this today, state that it is in Hebrew, that they remove some certain words in here. They remove black from the statement because it actually is mentioned Israelites and left black out and they removed it to where they can put anything else. But what we need to understand is Many people also say this is talking about a woman and always talking about him. Solomon is doing something with this woman and this woman is talking to him. And that's not what this is saying. So that's why I say, can you handle the truth? Because as you continue to look through the line of process, through precepts of scripture, that you clearly see that you daughters of Jerusalem, he is talking about the entire Jerusalem are a black people. Compared as the tents of Kedar, comparison. Comparison as the curtains of Solomon, black. Who? Daughters of Jerusalem. The people. We all, when you look at us as a group, we are looked at as daughters. Looked at as a wife. Why? Because he's the head. So he's the man in all of Jerusalem is the wife.
this is the problem. This is why we need to look at it and understand clearly, completely what the Bible is saying. And then the Bible is used on precept based on Isaiah 28.10, Psalms 119.4, and 119.104. So remember this time for next week, something for you to chew on. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. You make sure you do this. If you want the truth of this matter, and you want the truth unto death, the Most High will fight for you on this matter. It's not by an accident you came here. This is the problem. This is what we need to understand. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. So if you want to hear the truth to be wise, then you'll be able to judge the based on precepts that's given. Is this true or do you want to hear a lie? This is plainly clear all the time. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. So what all this saying is you are standing in the middle of the multitude of the elders, teachers and Bible teachers, preachers and, and all get close to the one that's teaching the book and only the one book. Teach you the precepts, not selling you books to try to understand the Bible. That's nonsense. This is the problem with a lot of people. They want to sell you a Bible with stuff in it. They want to sell you a book with stuff in it. Then they want you to pay them. Stand in the multitude to the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. The one that is not going to sit there and lie to you. The ones that like you sit there and get paid. They're con pimping you for your money, for power over your mind. This is the problem with most of us today. We like to get tied up in other things. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not thy parables of understanding escape thee. Why is that? Why is that? The one organizing his knowledge through the thoughts and instruction and commanding the scripture as you see in Isaiah 28, 19. From this will come your ideas of life and generate your direction and experience through the root of the language of the Most High using precepts. This is what we're going to do. This is why we need to understand it. This is why I say, can you handle the truth? And if thou see a man of understanding, Get thee be times unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. If you if you know someone who has an understanding precept him, you better get to know. You better get to know him. This is what we need to know. The truth may pass you by because the truth come to you and your ears refuse to hear. However, let your good times be next to him at the most high. Let thy mind be upon thy ordinances of Yahweh and meditate continually on his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom in thy own desire. Your mind should be on the words of the most high and not false matters created by man. Remember in the commandments, these which is in your heart and the Most High will give you wisdom of your own desires. So I'm going to tell you, until next week, you want the truth. You will get the truth. You have the foundation. You go back and study it. Look at it. Make sure you clearly understand it. Because I'm going to tell you, most people, it's going to be hard for them to, to really take what's going to happen. A lot of people is not going to really clearly understand what's really going to go on. But we're going to get down to the truth of the matter. We need to understand exactly what this book is about, who it's pointing to, how you see them, how you can actually show the characteristics, because now we, we understand what they went about. We understand what they want to do to everybody. We understand what's going on all the time, but now we're going to understand exactly who these people are. Yesterday, today, and moving forward. So hopefully you guys got some understanding from this one.
But I tell you what, next week we're gonna we're gonna change a lot of things. You're gonna see a lot of things that's gonna be happening, and many people won't want to come against it. But it's gonna be technically impossible because these are precepts. So based on commentaries, uh, outside book writings, we don't even use that here. Everything that we use here is coming directly out the Bible. So if you have a problem with that, that's that's something that you will have an issue with. And they're supposed to open this up to where I can have a little bit of time, to where I can. Ask some quick, answer a few questions before I go off. So we'll see what uh, what's going on and see if we have any questions, uh, anything that that's happening. And so far, you know, I need thank you. You're more than welcome. So hopefully, um, look like we don't have any questions. So it looks like we might be. Okay. Let me see. You do have me on. Man. Uh, yeah, you're more than welcome. I appreciate you guys. That's that one. To become a Hebraist. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a large order, but anybody can. Um, basically, uh, you can send me an email. I can show you what all the requirements are for for that, to where you can go through it, and and that's something that you might be seeking. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a process, quite a few years, but but you can you can become a breast. And other people, Bitten Edge and uh, King James making people reject the Bible. I don't know where you got that from. Uh, the negative things said about King James, too many people putting in things. Thank you, blessing. Yeah, okay. Another great thank you. And sin, sin, sin. Looking for part two. Part two is gonna trip you out. Part two is just, we need to get that foundation down just so where we can understand what happened, why they wanted to, why they really want to destroy us, because we destroy people based on what the Most High said. So now they're looking to destroy us. That's why they want to do what they do. Most people don't even know why they want to destroy us, but that's what I was actually just showing, why they want to destroy us. And password, last week, this year, for the next week, yeah. And also teaching. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to see what book were you reading from? With the book of Judas. Yeah, we use the apocrypha here. <laughs> the book, uh, that's something that they took out from most people with the 66 Bible book. If you go look at the original King James Bible, it has the apocrypha in it. They have letting uh, people lie to people and tell you that it's not expired, which those are people that that have nothing to do with the Bible telling you what you can read and what you can't read. So, and the apocrypha is clearly right there in the King in the original King James Bible. And I'm trying to get to some, but if you go to the Book of Judith, if you get you get you get the apocrypha, you see the Book of Judith in there. You you actually see it in there. And I use the entire Bible. I use from Genesis to Revelation, that Apocrypha is right there, smack dab in the middle of it. And I use that also. So I don't know if you're new here, but if you're new here, you'll see me go to um, uh, the Apocrypha quite a bit. I go there and there because it's all part of scripture. And yeah, the volume. Can't hear you now, the volume went out. Really? No, my volume, let me check here. One second. Touch, yeah, no, my volume is good on this side, so I don't know. Thank you, thank you. And now the next week. Yeah, because during, during this week, I do know I'm gonna do a, another small teaching because uh, we do have some people also going back through the Christian versus believer, so we just gonna, nail the coffin on that one and put out another one on that and basically it'd be during the week be about a 30 minute lesson 
and we're going to go through that and literally just put a coffin on it because I see some Christian people, they want to, oh, okay, yeah, everybody's saying they can hear, so I don't know what, yeah, that's what I'm saying, I'm looking at my thing, I can see I'm talking, so, yeah, so I don't know what happened with your, with your, with your audio. It's my first day. You came across my feed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you are required to keep a beard. Yes. And thank you also, Annie Lee. And and love you too. And um being higher perception. Wow, wow again I understood all. Where do I start? Where do you learn from? where do I learn from to become a breast? I must repent first though. Yeah, um uh, Nathan Williams. Yeah, uh yeah, basic two locations that are certified you as a breast what they actually do. And then um and then some some of the classes that you'll go through as a breast, you'll go through some of mine. And that's that goes on a little bit of a different de deal. But I prefer to talk to you about that off of here because it gets into a lot of stuff. But basically still just understand understanding scripture to where that's the, the the thing. You'll never go outside the book. But on how the how the precepts are instructed and constructed, that's what you need to know, and that's where you get into a lot of you get into a lot of stuff. So there's some stuff here I don't really want to get into, but 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 um, send me an email and I can show you the um the foundation of being a becoming a breast. And. How do you break the covenant with the enemy who visited you in your dreams? How do you break a convenient a covenant with the enemy who visits you in your dreams? See, you have an enemy in your dreams. Sounds to me like the most high ain't there because he can't reside with that one. It, Neither, only one can reside in the body at one time. So that's something you really need to look at and understand. So that's something, that's something else going on there. What about locks in your hair? Locks in your hair is fine. And the one certain thing, I would never, Anyone the word hell and okay the words of wisdom yeah and you keep asking why why didn't you answer me this is a serious question I just experienced yeah again I just told you um, you talking about you have any you talking about you have an enemy visiting you again that's something um, I don't, I don't get into it. I understand you saying it's serious, but again, uh, he don't reside where sin is. That, that's clear as I can get. And between the nation and the race elder. Is there a difference between nation and a race? And the nation is talking about a people. A race is really something man made up. So... So that's the difference. But the nation is clearly talking about the people. We tend leading into captivity, should go into captivity. Whites is over. Yeah, I don't get into that. Um, you know, you know, uh, to get on whites and talk about whites in a way, you know, you got many other people that's out there. But, but, um, yeah, I don't I don't get on here and bash uh any any um any nation really. All I do is teach what Bible says, so but to bash them, I'm I'm not here to do that. I'm here to 
make sure that Israel is obeying the law, statute, and commandments of the Most High. Not here to bash any other nation. Literally, that's what I'm not here for. Yeah, I checked my email. I'll check it in. And what's going to mix become place of this? Um, I'm in Denver. Do you know of any teachers where I'm at? No, it's not actually in Denver. I already know that. And I'm interested in your private classes. Those private classes is actually uh, closed. So that's something, but they plan on doing something. So just they just look forward to it because I know they're going to get into um, what we're going to be doing um, webinars. So that's something that I know they're getting into. But to speak more on it, I don't, until they get more, give me more information, how would I know? Mm. Yeah. Seriously. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I see they're giving her some information. It says, Arlene, can you give me the scripture, please? I really feel I was tested in a dream. Dream, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't get into a lot of that. Um, yeah. yeah, I just leave that where, where where it is. And Elder have a question, what is it? And Elder have a correct telling you, a young man shouldn't date absolutely outside the nation. I think in uh, another teaching also, can I get the Moab? any more been emailing the university a lot yeah understood and yeah and you don't supposed to go out your nation because it's actually commanded you can actually go through a dream so dream talks about it heavenly um i came to you i came to you would you teach me now I teach whatever you want to know i'm very open and thank you elder johnson beware of the or teachings of phrases of Pharisees, they mock him and call it him Yeshua, the son of a harlot. Yeah, they, they, they do call him that too. And the devil is still of the earth, tempting those that he may devour. Yes, extremely true. I'm going to make a statement, watch a lot of different teachings, tribe of Judah, teach. Tribe of Judah teach, yeah, yeah, very, very cool. City of Israel, yeah. Tribe of Judah, I know, so the other ones I don't, I'm not, um, City of Israel, not sure, not sure. And me before understanding most words can. I can't wait for every class. Yeah, yeah. We we getting ready to do a um, the school of precepts. You can see it actually on the site right now. You can see it on um, on uh, King James Bible University site as a I forgot what they got it as. Yeah, but that's something you can. I know you said it. Register there because a lot of stuff getting ready to happen there. So register there. Are there two Jerusalems? Not that I know of. And how do you get your family to see the covenant and change? When you figure that one out, my brother, you call me. Because I'm going to tell you, I have some in my own family that, that's... <laughs> yeah, because all you can do is give them the truth. So it's not for everybody. That's the thing. Give them the truth. So I'm going to accept it. So I'm not. But 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 I I understand. I understand where you're coming from. I clearly get it. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Thank you. Can you teach me personally? Um. 
Send me, send me an email. Actually, let me see. Let me, let me put this in here. Doctor, because I, I am pretty busy, but that, but I am very open. And uh, some people here can also tell you that. Some people will tell you that. That's an email. Uh, and that email is to is to McGee. So I need to see Israel. We can work it. Not in Israel. We got a problem. I'm going to be coming. It's just a real one. Jerusalem. Yeah, actually, um, actually, the spelling on both of them is is different than what than, than what we normally use. So, so I don't know which one is um, you might be referring to. All nations before him are as nothing. They count kind of less than nothing. Yeah, that's all true. Not to blow his leg. God don't want you. Yeah, I don't know what's the point of point putting that up there, but America. Yeah, you know what they're saying, um, how do you know that North America is where the tribe of Judah was brought to? Interesting question, why, oh, never said that. Uh, actually, I'm going to stay on yours for a second because it's very interesting. Uh, why, oh, uh, it says, how do you know that North America is where the tribe of Judah was brought? Beautiful question. Thank you. Um, one, nobody knows. You gotta remember, when you were sold, they put everybody on the same boat. So, the lie with the chart is what they say is, Judah came here, Issachar went there, that's the lie. Because they didn't sit there and section you out. Everybody was on the boat, all, all different nations, and they just heard you out. That's all that happened. So, when somebody sit there and tell you, that one particular tribe went here, another particular tribe went there. One, you got 12 parts. And the Most High already said, you are spread it throughout the four corners of the world, not through 12 places. It, it, the more you go into it, the more, un the more just silliness it gets into. And this is the problem. Two, can a leopard change its spots? No. Can Israel change its spots? No, you all gonna look the same. You're not gonna be over here and look one way and over there you look another way. That's not that's not gonna happen. You actually do yourself a favor. Uh go to Google and do Afro whatever country you wanna go into and watch what you're gonna pull up. You're gonna put up you're gonna put up a lot of people who look just like you. Simplest way to do it. But that but that twelve chart thing is a bona fide lie. And and there's no way they can no way they can they can support that. So when they start sitting there telling you um, uh, uh, Indians this and that, Indians were so bad about so bad with um with slaves. Most people don't even know is that if you got Indian in you because most of them still came through rape and different things. But the Indians were so cold blooded with with slaves to where they didn't feed you or give you water or anything. They'll work you till you died. Then they just buy some more slaves. Then we had our slaves with us. We was running from Indians running to the white man because we were being treated better. Even though you see the harshness there, we were being treated better than the Indians was treating us. Go check it. <laughs> then find out how shocking it is. But that's how they treated us. And then as they start diminishing their number, then they start, then they start, um, they start going into a, a lot of our women trying to keep the race going. That's what they start doing. They wanted to keep their nation to stay plentiful, so that's why they start doing that, and they start mating with us. That's what happened. So people sit there and say what they want to say, but India, not a good thing. And literally, I have a grandmother who was who was a um, great grandmother was a full India, and I have a I have a grandmother which she been passed, but half India. Don't do it change the fact? No. That's what Indians was doing. And let me 
dice yeah so it says sell physical for Israel they tell you that's the covenant that's a that's a self-explanatory in Malachi 3 6 for I'm the Lord I change not so nothing ever changed that was a covenant that he had with Abraham for a sign so you tell me ever change he don't change so you let no you let no man change it if he don't say it's not changed and he said that nothing changed in his side and so most people like to run to Paul and Paul say he speak to them who know the law and if you don't know the law don't don't deal with Paul so this is this is what a lot of people like to do they go deal with Paul and don't understand Paul Yeah, trying to get to okay. Yeah, the virgin birth is really what helped me pick right teachers. Love you. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. And yeah, this this um entertain. I don't know why you keep going at white people. White people haven't did anything. To basically, we we were put in captivity by the Most High. He just told you how the Gentiles were going to be treating us, because that's what they do. He's giving you foreknowledge of what they do, and we still continue to act stupid and still continue to sin. So, again, who put ourselves in this predicament? Not them. We did. But this isn't a, um, this also is not a uh, channel to bash anyone. So, and if this is that, 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 come, that, that have a kind of mentality. And we're not here for kind of mentalities. Can people be another color? And yeah, the blood of the light does the most high want them or only blacks? Actually, you go back and see what your father is. If your father black, doesn't matter. I don't care. You can be white as white or dark as dark. But it depends on what your father is, what your lineage come through. So your lineage come through to where you coming through Israel, that's not going to change. And the book of Obadiah explains a little. But you have other books that actually tell you more of what happened to Esau. Um, other people teach. Teach that. I've been curious. Yeah, some of these. Yeah, this um Yeah, somebody he has a real issue, um and as I said, Congress I guess Congress Entertainment. I'm really not understanding your 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 point here, you know. Yeah, so I don't know what kind of points you're trying to make. Mm, yeah, they were doing more than five runaways because they have they also own slaves. Yeah, so again, you have people again using um, the Hebrew, saying the Hebrew alphabet, they're actually using Yiddish, which is actually not the Hebrew alphabet, what you see in modern Hebrew. That's not it. So the same thing, what you say in the letter Ta, and you're looking at a Bible, and you think that Ta means what you think it means, you're looking at the wrong letter. You're looking at a Yiddish letter.
No, there's no class tomorrow. No class tomorrow. That's tomorrow's uh, is an off day. And dating with hot girl, if you don't speak up for yourself, I don't know who you are. I'm trying to see who you are. Because it seems like you might have a little bit of an issue. I'm trying to see. Let me see who. Th oh, yeah, and I think this is. And she want to speak up for herself. Which makes no sense, but um, the name Slave Road, uh, George Lopez. This goes down. Yeah, see again, close slaves religion, but he wrote nothing about. Okay, I can care less what he wrote, Lopez. I can literally care less. As I said, we deal with scriptures here. I don't deal with other people's books. So you can put all that all day, all day long. I'm not, I don't even address other books. Yeah, it depends on who their daddy is. Depends on who their father is. A lot of mix. You have a lot of um, children that are going to be mixed based on if uh, you have a sister that is married to another nation and they have children, she's actually being a baby factory or producing non-Israel babies. Is there? And show me a gate that says Gentile. That I know it's twelve gates. Show me one that says Gentile. That's all I've, that's literally all I got to really talk about, you know, so, so many of them going to sit there and think that they, um, that, uh, it says, uh, you know, we all, all of them going to come, but just remember it's 12 gates. Just keep that. Always keep that in mind. For I'm the Lord. I change not. It's 12 gates. So it's the same as me and you. I can be from the Levi. You can be from Judah. I don't know. But I'm just saying, for example, yeah, me and you might be buddies. But when you go in there to, to, to the gate, you're going to go through one gate. I have to go through another gate. So again, a Gentile, what gate are they going to go through? Tell me. They're Gentile. And this is, and this is what they have the problem with. And God has the issue, not me. It looked like um, some people. Do you have evidence? that the slave trade were Hebrews. Actually, wait till next week. You'll get it all a mouthful, uh, Lopez. I see you have an issue with it all in its entirety, which is even a greater thing because everybody want to believe that they are it. And we'll find out. We're going to find out exactly what's going on. So hopefully you do join next week. And you, you'll find out for yourself, all scripture, not going outside the book, you're going to find out exactly who these Hebrews are, what they look like, what they do, who they are, you name it, what, what, what was on them, you will know it clearly because it will be a sign upon them to where you cannot miss them. We're going to go from Genesis to Revelation 
and you will find out for yourself. Not some other book to validate something else. We're going to hear from the most highest mouth, not from some man. And what is that chart behind you? About can I get a copy? It was given to me. Actually, uh, actually a good, just a pretty cool chart. It's um, uh, it lets me know time periods. It gave me time periods. Who was living at this time? Died at this time? Um, not even um, but Hebrews, but also Egyptians and stuff. Cause we could we run closely by them a lot of stuff. So we have a lot of Egyptian stuff there too. So we get all those time periods in there to where um, it's closer. You, you can get better understanding on some stuff. And then it has a few Bible references in there. So pretty cool chart, but it was actually given to me. And um, I believe, email me. I believe I might can get you the number to where you can actually buy it. I believe the number is on there. So. But but the chart is good. It's kind of it's kind of complex and it might be somewhat confusing. Might try to be, but it's really not. It's really really a cool chart though. Yeah, I'm trying to see Hebrew occurring. Yeah. Yeah, if I look away, but my bloodline is from Jacob. Yeah, if it is, you, I don't know what the issue is. But I'm just saying, most people sit there. You got to remember, um, Israel is like the rainbow. So just keep that in mind. Try to hey, shift some manifest seven. Yeah, it's the Sabbath teaching last week. This week and last Sunday. Yeah, we moved uh, we moved that around, but just call me and let me know because I'm pretty sure you have my sister Boyd. I believe you have my phone number, so just call me. You got people in the chat. Yes, and they mentioned a lot of things, but have no precepts, nothing. What's your point? Right. Correct, Brother Thomas. And if I'm lost, then how do I know that it's a contradiction? That's the point. If you don't, if you don't know, ask the question, but don't sit there and act like you know, making a contradiction. Technically, what Brother Foss, Brother Smith was doing. Technically, all he's saying. That's literally that's all Brother Smith said telling you. Actually, I'm looking at Brother Smith. That's literally all he's saying. And he's saying, um, the Bible has the apocrypha in it with the precepts uh, that go with the rest of the books. Okay. Um, the Bible has an apocrypha in it but the precepts is the Bible. So you just got to know how to precept the Bible. Technically what happens, not running relational. So if you go buy those Thompson chains and all those books and they have all those verses in there, those are not precepts. Those are relationals to keep you on the thought pattern on what they want you to know. That's why you are run from one thought to another thought. You're not running on a precept to understand what he was saying. That's the difference on what they do. But, a lot of people buy them, a lot of people use them. And me personally, I do not like Bibles with those type of notes in them. I normally block them out. Yeah. I just forget the multitudes. Everybody seen, seen focus on Jews. We get the multitude. Actually, God's want again. Uh, Saul understand the multitude is talking about still Israel. So, God wants Israel. 
understand that. So this is the problem, which actually Brother Smith was just saying, I believe that he was a, a lot of people like to bring up a lot of stuff or say things without precepts. And Yahweh Shai said himself, he only come but to the house of the Lord, sheep of Israel. I don't know what part you missed. Then there's something you really need to understand. Oh yeah, next week going to shock a lot of people. Actually going to upset probably more than anything else because uh, these are precepts that we normally don't bring out, but they're going to upset a lot of people. Not Israel, but a lot of people. You can't name one person that is Hebrew. Okay, again, can you name one person? You know, I don't get into those, uh, Lopez. I don't have the time for it, really. And it tell you, um, many people have a, have an issue because mainly um, when you're dealing with uh, the Bible, the Bible is extremely clear. As it's being extremely clear, it's letting you know exactly what he's dealing with. When he's letting you know what he's dealing with, most people don't like it because you find out that you was reading the lie and your preacher was telling you a lie. So, same thing. Uh, actually, let's go back here. I'm going to show you something. Let's go back to this one. Go back to this one verse. One verse. I'm going to hit this one verse and we're going to see. Because I believe I can do it while we're on. And let me see. Let me change this. And let me put this up. And I'm going to ask you a question. It says, I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. So, can you explain that? See, these are things that we need to be able to explain. These got precepts to this. So, and it then it tell you right there, as, as is a comparison, George. Clearly a comparison. It's a comparison to what? It's a comparison to the tents of Kedar. It's also a comparison to the curtains of Solomon. So, you talking about name a person, they all through the Bible. See, one person, slave trade, remitting they were Hebrew. See, again, you sitting there talking about, now you was on the ship, or are you trying to say that, you talking about people that talking about who they was Hebrew. So, that's what I say, it's almost silliness to which, um, to entertain stuff like this. Because, you trying to use personal, you trying to use personal uh, analogies. You trying to use personal analogies to, um, to prove a point, but you can't prove it by precepts. So what people do is go outside the Bible and start naming anything. And that's basically what they do. So it, it goes into silliness. And repentance means where it goes, um, You know, see, uh, okay. It's all good. Good Vincent. Good day. Destruction. And. Yeah, um, actually, uh, brother, did do go on and just, um, yeah, because I think this, this guy, uh, let me see, same brother, do do a thing, and you got it, yeah, yeah, just take care of that dude, yeah, because he's kind of sickening, you know, so, Everybody else look like um, I can't see. 
can't see your email, so email me. Well, let me see the email. Uh-oh. Yeah. Let me show that. At. That's my email. And to be a teacher, one must have true patience. True. And no lies in the Bible, just misunderstood. Beautifully said. <laughs> Beautiful. Actually, I need to steal that with my brother. Well, most time in movie, not in the Bible. How God created Adam. Yeah. But, um, look like we're just getting our dialogue. So I'm going to get ready to go off. Yeah, the great teaching teacher. I will be uh, contacting you. Shalom, brother. Love you, God. Love you, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's my brother, Jason. Okay. He's looking to hear from you, my brother. You know, I'm seeing you talking to you and your brother. And, uh, because I know, do know that you, uh, you actually was calling, checking on those Bibles. You know, it's the same. Okay, so I see everybody else has kind of got, uh, you got great, thank you. Yeah, I've, some people don't think, well, only family do, they don't think so, but I appreciate it. But, um, uh, angry patients, your knowledge must be, must get understand. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so we we we'll, we'll continue. Um, but um, next week it's uh we get the second chance of all Israel to get it right. True. Yeah. And we just need to make sure we get it right. That's that's the key. And my biggest thing is to, to make sure we stay away from um false doctrines, false teachers. Uh, as they say, you know, you have Christians love to use uh, forsake not assembly of yourselves. Okay, don't fall for the lie because if you're still assembling with people who's not of the truth, who's still teaching of another Christ, you still fall into false doctrine. That's the problem. That's the reason, the same reason why you have so many churches around because the devil keeps all these places just in case. If you're going into these places and that one teaches one thing and this one don't, you might like that other one better, so you just go into the other fishing hole, which is still the devil's the devil's fishing hole. It's the way it can continue to keep you in lies. So, so that's what you watch. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Hey, thank you, thank you, and you too. You know what I'm saying? Great live stream. Hey, I appreciate it, my brother. And uh, yeah, you have a great day too. So, so it looks like we have no other questions, but we do. But we're going to get into that um, precept thing, that precept, the school of precept, which um, brother dude is telling me some of the information, but he's giving it to me sporadic. I don't know why he's doing it like that right now. Cause he's asking me to know something, but it's too kind of sporadic for me to actually do it. But 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 we will be having um some some other people on here to where um I'm gonna be having um some live dialogue with. Hey, thank you, thank you, Sister Eileen. Yeah, I, I try, but. Um, uh, no, I will tell you what, um, I don't see that guy back in here, so I think, um, that was taken care of. My brother, yeah, so, I find a Hebrew name, or I'll stay with the English one. Well, beautiful question. And the same as it says, um, uh, do you keep your Hebrew name or stay with your English one? My thing is, if you choose to change your name to a Hebrew name, change it legally. 
Uh, don't do like people do where they decide to change your name, which um, you in slavery. So the same thing is if you decide to change it, see in the most high change names, other people didn't. But if you change it, change it legally. Don't, don't walk around with two different names. And then people know you by one name and other people know you by another. Just change your name entirely, do it legally. Yeah, uh, DNA, uh, that's gonna be in next week's teaching also. Um, Cause DNA is a big thing that they actually like to use. How do you find the Hebrew name of David? That's the same one I read. You know, is it okay to pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Good question. So again, you gotta remember Jesus Christ is a transliteration name of Yahweh Or you see has those same thing you see in Greek, but that's a transliteration of the name. Now you look in your English book, transliteration. That's basically what you're saying all through scripture. So as you see that name and you praying in that name, now can he hold that against you? No, because that's the name. That's the transliteration name. But my thing is to you, if you know his name, it's the same as I tell people, I use this notoriously all the time. If I'm in France or somewhere else, or even in, from, if I'm in um, Mexico or wherever else, I know Miguel is one place, I know Michelle is somewhere else. But if you ask me my name, I'm gonna tell you my name is Michael. Don't call me Michelle or Miguel, even though my wife calls me Miguel sometimes. But the main thing is, call me Michael. That's my name. So it's the same as him. You know his name, Yahweh Shai? You know his real name? Why not call him by his real name? Jesus is a transliteration of that name. That's all it's saying. So if people say, well, no, that's the false name in there, then you can deem, deem the entire book a lie because that name is sitting there. So if that name is sitting there and they saying that's the wrong name and that name, transliteration name of that is wrong, then the entire Bible is a lie. That's what you hold to. That's what you got to remember. This is what they try to fool you on where you have camps tell you, no, this is the name, this name is a lie, this name is this. That's the transliteration of that name. Same as you go somewhere else, your name might be transferred into something something else. That's all it's saying. So he will not hold it to, but you need to know who he is. But most people have tied this false Christ to that name. So you have some of them who won't use that name based on that reason. But that name, if that's the name you're using, and you're not tying it to anything, you're tying it to him as your Lord and Savior, and he is the son of the God of Israel. Now you're dealing with something. Now you're dealing with the true one. Not tying it to some someone who was birthed by Mary and and the seed came from the Father and all that. You believe it in that one? You, you're tying it to the false Christ anyway. But he's from the seed of Joseph. He came from the seed of David. And it tells you that plain as day when you look at Matthew 1 and 1. And perhaps DNA. Yeah, these uh Yeah. Yeah, see and your father and mother named you, I don't see no issue with it. Um, you have these tribe of Ephraim. See, my thing is, if you know what tribe you're from, I like to know how you know. That's the whole catch. That's that's really the point. How do you know? Because they was all on the boat at the same time. And attack and. Actually, that um, Thomas, not a bad idea. He will uh, nation prayer, August 24, August 21st, 19, 2019. Not a bad thing. But, um, you know, it's not something that a uh, bad idea, but, but everybody need to repent and come back to the, to the most.
goes high. Repent is to remember what we did, what our forefathers did, what our ancestors did, what we did to where we can come back to him correct. That's the point. And most of us don't. We want to repent for what we did yesterday. We only remember what we did yesterday. Remember what we did this morning. Not going back. Uh, flat earth another lie don't believe it um, and the Bible actually tells you what it is but and then these so it look like uh Now, Christian actually means stupid come from Cretans, but that's basically what a Christian is, telling you stupid. But we're going to deal with that. We're going to be dealing with that exact one this week, and we're going to go through that teaching. And um, this earth is flat. Uh, I don't know how much longer Brother Dudu going to deal with you, but you putting out something I know he's going to get tired of. Uh, do you think Pharisees and Sadducees during their time were Hebrew Edomites? Bible don't tell you they was Hebrew Edomites. Bible don't say. But the Bible do give you precepts on who these Pharisees and Sadducees are. And we'll be finding that out. So it's going to be very clear. So, look like we got everything. So, I want to thank everybody for um, for going through this uh, teaching with us and that you guys will continue to do the studies. Make sure as you do the studies, go through the precepts, understand the, understand the foundation. Because once we get into the, um, once we get into the, uh, the second part, the second part is really going, it really just hones in on a lot of stuff and going to let you understand a lot of things. And then you going to truly know, which some people going to get upset. Some people going to be happy, but upset on another note. And is Jesus a translation or transliteration? Do you understand the difference? And we have the, him back here. There's a... He's doing here, but we're going to um, create a lot of different things. But we need to make sure um, everything else is through, and we're pretty good. So, with that, uh, we're going to close out. But hopefully, um, and Brother Smith, yeah, it changed, but give me a call because I know you have my number. Give me a call, and then I can make sure we take care of it. So, with that, I bid each and every person. Peace